Mr. Thompson. Madam Chairwoman, Ranking Member Graves, uh, thank you for holding this thoughtful and, and timely hearing. You know, I represent uh, one of the most rural districts uh, this side of the Mississippi, uh, the, and the number one economic driver for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania remains uh, agriculture, and, and as is for my district. You know, from from the northeastern dairy farmers to the to timbering harvesting in the Allegheny National Forest, to mushrooms and tomato farms in the southeast, Commonwealth has over sixty three thousand farms. Uh, many of which are mom and pop operations, just like uh, my my history, my family of uh, of dairy farmers back a generation ago. And as you can imagine, proposals increase taxes on small businesses, and any move towards a cap and trade policy, frankly, scares me, and puts my constituents, uh, those small farmers who are back home, or the backbone of uh, Pennsylvania's economic engine, in a in a very tough position. You know, when we're looking at what looks like very unacceptable costs for. Uh, uh, proposed for speculative benefits, just to think the four percent of carbon dioxide emissions that are the or the scientific consensus is that that humans contribute towards. Uh, equally so, the in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Utility Commission has removed case of old rate caps that come off in 2010, and it'll cause electric rates to increase 30 to 40 percent above the current price. Now that paired with the federal increase brought on by uh, federal tax increase brought on by cap and trade, I'm afraid my constituents, farmers, manufacturers, families, are going to face unnecessary burdens even more so during a time of economic downturn. Now, we're hearing proposals to switch to cleaner burning natural gas as a fuel, and I support this move. Uh, however, at current prices and limited production capacities, this seems uh, haphazard, especially for the um, agriculture industry that depends on natural gas as a feedstock for, and, uh, for fertilizer. Uh, just last summer, we witnessed some of the highest energy costs in memory, uh, energy prices that threatened to make America non-competitive in comparison to our neighbors globally. Now, there, there were proposals on the table to open up areas both onshore and offshore as a means to supply this much-needed natural gas, and in turn, prices would be reduced and jobs would be created, and our nation be, could uh, lower its uh, dependence on, uh, on foreign imports. Because natural gas burns clean, there will undoubtedly be an increased demand if cap and trade or a carbon tax should be instituted. And so, relative to uh, the gentleman representing the, the farming-related industries, uh, I know Mr. Graves had gone down this road in terms of, uh, and I just wanted to affirm, uh, in terms of the price of fertilizer and the impact. Um, you know, I assume there's a consensus that. Uh, as the uh, agree that the price of fertilizer will go up as uh, demand for natural gas goes up, uh, could you could you briefly describe how fertilizer costs respond to the uh, increase or decrease of natural gas prices? Well, very much. It's very much tied to that. I mean, as natural gas prices go up, we we experience some of the highest nit nitrogen costs that we've ever hit in the history of the United States. So it's very, very uh, uh, susceptible to that, and that's why you know I I I, I still want to keep, go back and say you know we we saw record amounts of fertilizer costs go up in, in the last two years, and and they've been down some this this past spring, but uh, they're still at record amounts, and that that it just got run away whether it was speculative or whether it was real, but but it hit the pocketbook here, and and that it scares all farmers. About the viability, and that's why it's just it's just adamant that we, if we're going to go down this road, that we're going to have to have some sort of mechanism to offset those additional costs, or or we won't survive. Absolutely, and I and I you know, I hear what you're saying on those those farms. You know, I, I'm I'm an independent businessman myself, and and uh, I'm I paid I, I used less fuel last year than I've ever used in my history as far as as far as gallonage, but I still paid way more than I ever did. So. All these things are going to have to be considered. That's why it's 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 absolutely imperative that we be careful as we as we go through this. But in my mind, a cap and trade program would be much less cost prohibitive to our survival versus a a, a carbon tax. And that's you know, and, and as I understand it, those are our two those are our two alternatives. And I just think that one offers an offset offset ability, and the other one is just flat a, a higher cost of doing business. Mr. Johnson, any opinion? <coughs> well, uh, yeah, I agree with what was just said. I just happened to have come from a meeting earlier with um, someone from the Fertilizer Institute, and so I've got a chart in front of me that shows uh, fertilizer prices, FOB Gulf Coast, from December of 07 uh, to the current time. 
uh, about $350 a ton in December of 07. It peaked in uh, right around harvest time of 08, as you know, at about $900, dropped to $100 um, in, uh, as of the first of the year and now has come back up to around 300. This, the whole point of saying that is, this is a very volatile market. Uh, and fertilizer prices are tied to it, and so we see them yo-yoing all over the place. It does underscore the point that was just made and that we have made repeatedly, at least the two of us representing production agriculture, that it's important that we have a robust offset program that provides some income opportunities for farmers uh, besides just cost increases. And that's really the message that we want to get through here today and to encourage uh, folks in the ag uh, committees and others to as quickly as possible weigh in on this bill so that the interests of agriculture can be dealt with in a very positive fashion. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank you.